This short video is about the management of stage 4 pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths worldwide. Only 1 in 10 patients will have life-saving surgery where a chance of a cure is possible. Patients may have symptoms for months before they are diagnosed. Investigations for diagnosis include scans such as ultrasound, CT, MRI, CT, PET scan and endoscopy such as endoscopic ultrasound and ERCP. A biopsy may or may not be performed during the course of these investigations. Now let's look into what is stage 4 pancreatic cancer. So this diagram shows pancreatic cancer over here and it has already spread to liver, other places within the abdomen and lymph nodes around the main blood vessels. Hence pancreatic cancer that has metastasized beyond the primary tumor is termed stage 4 pancreatic cancer. Following the diagnosis, an initial assessment is made of the patient's performance status and what does that mean? This is the algorithm that most clinicians would follow to try and understand the patient's fitness for treatment such as chemotherapy. Those graded 0 and 1 are optimum candidates for chemotherapy. Others may be given a chance to improve their performance status by improving nutrition and symptom control. Continuing on the same theme, patients with pancreatic head tumor are often jaundiced and it is really important to control the jaundice. An assessment would also be made of the comorbidity bur burden, that means the other health conditions that may have an impact on how the patient is treated. And finally, patient will undergo a full assessment of the disease burden by way of a CT scan of the chest, abdomen and pelvis, as well as assessment of tumor marker called CA199. Once this assessment is complete and patients are deemed candidates for chemotherapy, then wherever possible, a genetic assessment should be made. And this is principally of two types. First one, the germline assessment assesses patients' own genetic makeup for their predisposition to certain cancers, including pancreatic cancer. And the second one is a somatic assessment. This is actually assessing the tumor that has been removed or biopsied to ascertain the genetic makeup of the tumor itself. And why is this important? It is important to determine what type of treatments will be effective for patients both now and in the future. This is the most exciting and evolving field and hence where available uh, it should be deployed. It may also help in switching chemotherapy to other forms of effective treatments for certain types of tumors. Let us have a quick recap of chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is the use of medication to combat cancer. How is it given? It's usually given through the intravenous route and commonly it would involve insertion of special catheters into the major veins. Since chemotherapy has toxic effects, each treatment is followed by a period of rest and the whole sequence is called a cycle of treatment. A full course of chemotherapy would involve several cycles put together. It is imperative before chemotherapy is commenced for patients to undergo biopsy and that they are fit as discussed previously. This is a simplified drawing that shows the effect of chemotherapy on dividing tumor cells. The common side effects of chemotherapy very briefly are nausea and vomiting, loss of appetite, diarrhea, constipation, infections, bone marrow suppression, problems with co coagulation and bleeding, skin, hair, nail changes, peripheral nerves are affected causing alteration in sensation loss of sensation and sometimes neuropathic pain, sleep memory and concentration may be affected. It is also important to mention that different patients will react differently to chemotherapy and some may suffer more than others. It is important for centers treating patients to offer them an opportunity to be part of trials assessing new treatments and to be given all of the relevant information if the patient so wishes. This is a very important part of treatment in stage 4 pancreatic cancer. Increasingly evidence suggests that combination chemotherapy using more than one agent is more efficient in prolonging life but perhaps at the cost of increasing toxicity. The decision with regards to the choice of chemotherapy and whether combination or single agent is used requires experience and an understanding of the patient's physiology as well as preferences. Immunotherapy where the body's own immune response is modulated to help in tumor control may also be a choice. Evidence now suggests that chemotherapy in stage 4 pancreatic cancer does increase survival and may also impact the quality of life by improving it in a positive way. That said, candidacy for chemotherapy is not straightforward. What about symptom control? This aspect is perhaps the most important feature of managing stage 4 pancreatic cancer. So let's just talk about general principles first. Where specialist palliative care team exists, these ought to be utilized so that they may provide optimum care and liaise between different teams as and when necessary. An assessment is also made about what is the best place for treating the patient and when a hospital, a hospice or home would be appropriate.
appropriate in conjunction with the patient and the family's wishes. Another important management decision is when to discontinue aggressive treatment options or those that are causing significant side effects. There is no right and wrong answer and this aspect will be individualized just like the rest of the treatment. And the most important factor of course is to achieve physical symptom control. Some other important points which sometimes get ignored are that the focus ought to be on the quality of life in the present moment and not on death itself. Psychosocial as well as spiritual care may be important to patient and families. Each symptom may have multiple causes and hence the team ought to be experienced in differentiating and drawing out the cause for each symptom and offering treatment. Importance of compassion, humor and attention in community cannot be underestimated. Where symptom control has not been achieved it is really important important for the team to try and try and try again to get to the bottom of the cause. Most importantly for stage 4 pancreatic cancer patients is a potential for adaptation, integration, reconciliation and above all transcendence. Attention to these four would inevitably color patient and the family's experience and journey. Now about individual symptom control, dealing with pain first. For each patient a full assessment of the cause of pain is paramount and there is a stepwise approach. Simple painkillers to start with then combined with opioids and moving on to longer acting opioid medication through the oral route and considering other ways of delivering it such as skin patches and less commonly through other routes. Pancreatic cancer can sometimes cause pain which can be quite severe in the back by infiltrating the nerves and this sort of pain may be helped by the use of gabapentin and pregabalin which are pain sensation modulators. Another treatment available for such patients is the destruction of pain nerve cells in an area called celiac axis by direct infiltration of chemicals such as alcohol. In this picture you can see the cancer over here and this is a main artery. Let's assume this is the celiac artery with nerve cells. This is an endoscope that has been inserted with an ultrasound attached at the tip called endoscopic ultrasound and a needle has come out to destroy these nerve cells. Jaundice as previously mentioned is a common symptom and is commonly caused by the tumor causing a stricture in the bile tube and obstruction. This is treated by way of an ERCP where an endoscope is inserted and then a stent which is a tube made out of metal or plastic is inserted within the bile tube thus springing open the stricture and allowing bile to flow through. This is an x-ray of an ERCP and a stent has been inserted. There are other ways of relieving jaundice if this fails and I have addressed this in my video. I shall share a link in description. Attention to nutrition is a very important component of improving quality of life in stage 4 pancreatic cancer. Patients ought to be encouraged to take small frequent meals. Pancreatic enzyme replacement is necessary for most patients. These enzymes replicate the function of pancreatic juice and improve significantly the breakdown of the food material and its absorption. I have discussed this in another video and I shall share a link. Patients often become diabetic or pre-existing diabetes worsens. For nutrition to improve, jaundice ought to be treated. This in itself is a big factor in loss of appetite. Controlling pain, nausea and vomiting is a central feature. Hypocaloric or natural remedy diets are not encouraged and some natural treatments may actually interfere with chemotherapy or medication for symptom control. Some patients are susceptible to obstruction of the bowel secondary to the tumor as drawn over here. You can see a tumor in the head of the pancreas causing obstruction of the bowel. In such situation there are two main options to relieve the symptoms. Patients life expectancy is thought to be longer than a few months. Then surgery through keyhole or an open operation may be performed to divert the stream away from the stomach by bringing up a loop of bowel and connecting it to the stomach as shown over here so that instead of the food passing towards the small bowel in this direction it goes straight into the small bowel and hence bypasses the obstruction. The second approach is by using the endoscope and inserting a stent which is a hollow tube made out of metal as shown over here and the food can then just go through the normal channel. The duodenal stent as placed over here is prone to obstruction and displacement. What about other symptoms? Nausea vomiting not related to obstruction ought to be controlled with medication. Modulation of chemotherapy and other treatments in conjunction with diet. Recognizing low mood and depression and offering the appropriate treatment and intervention. And of course concerns about death and dying ought to be tied in with the patient's beliefs, religious predisposition, the need for expressing their preferences and encouraging meeting and direction with religious chaplains or professionals as appropriate. In all of this it is important that patient and the family's wishes are considered and every opportunity provided for, to put their life affairs in order. I hope you found this talk useful. If you have any comments please do share.